<laughs> hey guys, uh, this is Dr. Colin Zhu. We are live in Denver, Colorado at the American College of Lifestyle Medicine. I am joined by my good friends and colleagues here. And yeah, so the burning question is, is why come to this year's American College of Lifestyle Medicine wow. conference? Why this year compared to other years? One, I love the hugs. And so I missed that when we were virtual. And two, it's in Denver because I live close by, so it's awesome. <laughs> but I love the hugs, and I love seeing you. Oh, thanks, Anthony. I, I mean, I, I can't say why this year over other years. I think it's in every year. I think we want to be here every year because it's wonderful to kind of be home and feel like we're here with all our community and our people. And um, I did learn yesterday that eight, you need eight hugs a day to feel like a human or something. So, so the, the hugs are nice. Well, I need to get a hug. But yeah, but um, <laughs> Yeah, seeing everybody and hearing what everybody's up to and learning about what everyone's doing. And, you know, then on top of that, keeping up with the latest science on how lifestyle medicine is really, really, really making a huge impact in people's lives. Yeah, it's incredible. It it's makes, just a place to be every year. It makes you grow taller. It's unbelievable. <laughs> how did you get so tall? <laughs> Kim uh, definitely is not on a chair, so. No, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can get back. Give <laughs> <Get back. Get laughs> <laughs> Don't fall off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for clinicians that are not aware of you know lifestyle medicine in general, why is it important for them to add it or maybe even suggest changing it as a primary you know treatment for their patients? So eighty percent of chronic illness is lifestyle affected. So I can use lifestyle medicine to prevent, reverse, and treat chronic illnesses. And that's so much better because the side effects are feeling better, being healthier, and it, the cost is nothing except for sometimes you need new pairs of clothes because you lose some weight and you get fitter. And it's, it's not just about health in terms of longevity. We want not just to live to 99. We want to live to 99 as healthy as we can be. So it's, it's in, increasing your health span, not just your lifespan. Yeah. And that, and that quality of life and speaking from the patient's perspective, not being a physician, like I'm just grateful that physicians are now starting to talk about lifestyle because truthfully, I grew up sick and obese and my doctors had limited tools to help me with. And the tools usually created other complications that, that impacted other areas of my life. So when I found what essentially is, is lifestyle medicine, my total quality of life improved. Not only did I get rid of my health conditions, which means that my, my doctor now says I don't have to see them as much, but yeah, yeah, the things that you said, more energy, more excitement, more confidence, and more fun. And so seeing that so many doctors are here, you know, and they're practicing this so that they can put that out to patients, it makes me incredibly optimistic for all of the people like myself who are out there who do have conditions who are suffering to different extents that they don't have to anymore. Awesome. Awesome. Dr. Kim, for those who do not know lifestyle medicine, how would you define it and how would you distinguish it from, for example, functional or integrative medicine? Because that can be confusing for the general lay public that are seeking different ways of therapy. So lifestyle medicine is an evidence-based practice using lifestyle. So nutrition, moving more, loving more, sleeping better, stopping using toxins like cigarettes, and getting a community together to... And what we learn is air pollution. Exactly. Exactly. To make people healthier and get them off their medications, make them feel younger every year. When I started incorporating lifestyle medicine into my health, because my mom had breast cancer, I wanted to prevent that mm. at a young age everything got better. My risk of breast cancer plummeted, my cholesterol plummeted, my weight plummeted, my energy increased. And this is without medication. So I don't have to worry about the cost of medications, the side effects of medications. And, and so lifestyle medicine is a wonderful tool in the tool belt. I'm an allopathic physician, so I use medicines when appropriate, but I want people to be on the least amount they need. And often they don't need anything. But if they need medicines, for example, insulin for a type 1 diabetic, I want you on physiologic doses of insulin, not on more because that causes problems. But to keep you alive, yes, we need you on the least that you need. So it's not woo-woo. There's plenty of science and evidence behind it. Yes, <laughs> I agree. Excellent, excellent. That's what we learn here. We, we follow the science here. 
we we were just in lectures about all of sciences, the science behind supporting lifestyle medicine for diabetes, for obesity, for psychiatric problems, for pediatric issues, you know, cancer, everything. That, that's what they present at these conferences. So they're presenting the latest evidence-based medicine, and we use that to help our patients get better. Anthony, you are the co-founder and CEO of uh, Plant-Based Telehealth, which is now Love Life Telehealth. What are some general myths you can debunk about telemedicine, about seeing a doctor through a screen? Yeah, I mean... It, it... Fortunately or unfortunately, over the past couple of years with what's happened with the pandemic, people are now believing with that telemedicine is a real way to receive medical care and patients. And it's so important because there are not, I mean, relatively speaking, there are not enough doctors who understand how to practice lifestyle medicine and who can help patients that way. But by telemedicine, people like, you know, doctors like yourselves can reach patients all over on the opposite ends of the country. I mean, it's, it's, it's fascinating to me, Dr. Zhu, that you're licensed in California and New Jersey, right? And you could likely have back-to-back -back patients who are completely on opposite sides of the country. So as far as... It's a lot of commuting for me, just, you know. <laughs> and, and you probably only have about 30 seconds to do it, but, uh, but so you have to be fast. <laughs> I mean, so as far as accessibility... Like, that's one of the things that I just find incredibly optimistic. And then the other thing is that people don't realize how much can be done. I mean, we have national accounts with both Quest and LabCorp. So pe patients can still go to the same places to get their lab work done as their primary care physician is sending them. And then also they don't understand that we're plugged into, like, the prescription network. So when someone does require medication, like, it's usually by the time the, the patient gets off the video call and goes to the pharmacy, it's usually in a bag waiting for them. So it really does work. It is fully licensed medical care. It is real licensed medical visits. And it's, it's, people are starting to catch on and people are really understanding that. But it, the other nice thing where it applies for lifestyle medicine is I think the kind of work that you do with your patients applies well because you don't necessarily need that high touch. It's a, a lot of it can be done through counseling and through planning and through informing and empowering patients to take this really good care of themselves to create the environment for healing. And I think that the audio video is enough of a medium to kind of make that connection with your patients so that, so that they can really feel well cared for, even though you're not in the same room. Last question. What are you most excited about for the future of lifestyle medicine? Oh, I want it to grow. I want it to... In, like right now? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So I want it to be available in medical schools to the future doctors, to all the doctors. I want the general public to learn about this. I want our kids to learn about this so that we can bring it into schools so they have healthier diets in schools. I want the hospitals to change the way they are. So I'm thrilled, first of all, to meet wonderful, brilliant doctors that I can work with now and, you know, share, share cases with and help our patients with. And it's just, so just growth. Yeah. It's a great thing. Growth and height, especially. And growth and height. And height. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's <laughs> it been wondering about that. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there growth hormone in plants? Like, Actually, what's going on? <laughs> taller when I started eating plants. Did you? I did. My height got up because <laughs> wow. I, I lost weight. And so I, I don't As know. As you but... say that, I'm correcting my posture. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> okay, guys. We'll check, check you guys on the next video. Thanks, Thank guys. You. Take care. Bye-bye.